Semiconductors are now at the fulcrum of global politics and amidst the present geopolitical scenarios where countries are looking to de-risk themselves from China and build alternate supply lines to reduce their dependence for chips. These are small ubiquitous products that are used in everything from cars to rockets. And it's these semiconductor manufacturing facilities that can now tilt global power balances and India is trying to ensure that it in that scales tilt in its favor. At the sidelines of the Quad, India and U.S. signed a pact to build chips for defense purposes. It's a first for the U.S., which will share critical technology enabling this production. But India's semicon push is now is not just limited to fulfilling its defense needs. It wants to become a major player in the overall supply chain, besides serving its own domestic needs. Reports suggest that in the next five years, India may need about $300 billion of semicon components. Now, building homegrown capabilities to servicing this demand is now part of protecting New Delhi's own geopolitical interests. And that's our big debate today on India Global. How can India's chip dream now turn into reality? How will the partnership with U.S. for defense needs open up larger opportunities? But first up, listen in to what Prime Minister Modi and Google CEO Sundar Pichai had to say on this. आज का भारत एम्बिशियस सपने देखता है और उन्हें पूरा करने का भरसक प्रयास भी करता है आज भारत विश्व की पांचवी सबसे बड़ी इकोनॉमी है विश्व की सबसे तेजी से ग्रो करने वाली इकोनॉमी है और मैं पक्का मानता हूं कि मेरा ये जो तीसरा कार्यकाल है उसमें हम थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी बब का हमारा जो गोल है उसको हम अचीव कर लेंगे द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज बीन फोकस्ड ऑन ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग इंडिया विद इज डिजिटल इंडिया विजन ही पुश्ड एस टू कंटिन्यू मेकिंग इन इंडिया डिजाइनिंग इन इंडिया Uh, we are proud to now make our Pixel phones manufactured in India. He is really thinking about how AI can transform India in a way that benefits the people of India. He challenged us to think about applications in healthcare, education, agriculture, and he's also thinking about the infrastructure of India. All right, let's open this up. Steve Fennezel, who's the Vice President, Global Innovation Policy and uh, Director, Center for Life Sciences, uh, joins me on the broadcast. Uh, I also have Tarun Pathak, who is uh, Research Director at Counterpoint Research, as well as Sanjeev uh, Joshipura of the India Spora. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking to me on uh, India Global. Uh, in fact, Tarun, let me start with you. You've been writing extensively about semiconductors uh, Explain to us, talk to us about the ambition that India has very clearly demonstrated in the last one year. There have been multiple pacts that have been signed and, and what lies ahead. So according to you, this pact that has been signed with the US, uh, does it open up a lot of opportunities? Does it kickstart manufacturing capabilities for India? Or do, you think, or do you think there's still some time left and some pieces that need to fit in? Thank you. Thank you for having me on show. I think a very important topic. Uh, the uh, uh, big focus of this is the global supply chains are diversifying. And if you look at uh, post-pandemic, what we have seen, the dependence on one nation can actually impact a lot of economies. So what has happened post the COVID is everyone has started diversifying a bit. And now if you look at semiconductor, their role has become very, very important. So we are talking about a industry uh, just specifically about India numbers, we are talking about closer to like $500 billion. And that is going to be very, very important because if you see things around, uh, chips are everywhere. Right now, in all the devices and the penetration of these devices are uh, increasing. So this becomes a very, very important for us as a nation to be uh, self-dependent on this and diversify uh, whatever the supply chains are being diversified. India stands advantage to that because we have, like Mr. Uh, Prime Minister has said that we have a diverse uh, pool of young audience that can uh, do really, really well on that. On top of it, we have a huge domestic demand. We are talking about something we are right. consuming close to like 43 billion of semiconductor content 
every year in terms of components in India, and this this is going to increase almost threefold in the next uh, six to seven years. So yes, a very very important segment to uh, take it all on right now. Exactly. That's that's why this discussion is so important. India needs to ensure that its geopolitical interests are protected, which is why it needs to have an independent supply line for chips and at the same time become a global player in uh, manufacturing of chips. Uh, Stephen, as a, let me ask you this, uh, that the pact and the collaboration with the US right now is for defense and several other areas. How important or crucial do you think that technology transfer will be for India to, for its larger chip ambition? Well, I think the relationship announced today, mostly on the military side, can most importantly serve as a validation factor for India. It's a confidence builder that when um, the U.S. government uh, is collaborating with the Indian government, with the Indian agencies, it shows to our companies that there's confidence in India's ability to manufacture semiconductors. As you know, India has long been a leader in semiconductor R&D and design. In fact, um, about 20% of the world's chips are designed in India. So the challenge for India, though, is to translate its strengths in semiconductor design into semiconductor fabrication. India has had initial successes recently with announcements from Micron uh, that they'll build an assembly test package facility in, in Gujarat. Um, but if India is to fulfill its global chip aspirations, it's got to show that it can manufacture semiconductors as effectively as it can design them. That's a very important point, Sanjeev. Let me ask you this, uh, which is that we've been speaking about designing, we've been speaking about testing, packaging, the lower end of the entire chain. But now we are talking about manufacturing. We are trying to move up the ladder. Can we do that? Can we, can we uh, ensure that we climb that ladder as fast as we hope to? Yeah, a few points here. So thank you for having me on the show. Uh, Vikram Misri, India's foreign secretary, actually made that point during, uh, you know, his uh, remarks in, uh, uh, in, uh, in New York, saying that this is the initiative where we, India is moving up the vertically integrated value chain, not just design, but also manufacturing and fabrication. Uh, you know, I think it's crucial to note that the semiconductors that will be manufactured will have wide applicability. First of all, I noted that... Uh, Konark Bhandari from the Carnegie Institute, who has been following semiconductors for a while, mentioned that the kind of uh, dual, uh, dual element semiconductors that are being made uh, have a lot of impact in the high energy space. And that really assists uh, in a variety of different applications, whether it's energy, whether it's military, uh, whether it's telecom, AI, etc. You know, I think it's fair to say that this deal is a demonstration of the fact that uh, U.S.-India ties have entered an era of convergence, as both America and India have been saying for a while. Uh, if you take a step back to India's semiconductor mission and to the ISET, the Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies, which were all signed last year, uh, I think the fact that this agreement has now come to fruition is just an indicator of the work that has been put into all of these, uh, all of these agreements, which are an all-of-government approach. And I think that is crucial to note that both governments are paying key attention to this. Indeed. And, and what lies ahead then, uh, Sanjeev, in your, in your uh, estimation, in your expectation, what do you think could be the next steps in this collaboration? Well, you know, the announcement that has been made is very encouraging. They are talking about 50,000 units per year manufacturing in phase one itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're also talking about, you know, employing 700 people, which is a relatively small number, of course, given India's needs. But the fact of the matter is that it's 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 something. And uh, they are talking about potential state government support, although we don't know exactly the location of the uh, of the plant. Uh, what I really want to emphasize here is that there are allied initiatives coming up around this. So the Saraswati Knowledge Center is what they are calling it. First of all, the factory itself is going to be called Shakti, which, as your viewers know, uh, is strength in Hindi. Then there is the Saraswati Knowledge Unit about semiconductor manufacturing that is going to come up, which will employ 100 people a year. Right. And then there is the Durga Design Center. So there are lots of allied initiatives that will come right. up around this that will create an ecosystem. And that's the, that's the main point. That's exactly what we are trying to do, which is to create that ecosystem. And Tarun, let me ask you this. What, according to you, should be the, the top two or three 
policy requirements that now need to come in to follow through on some of these very important commitments and, and uh, intent? What should be the next policy steps? Right. I think one one is uh, we need to expand our current incentives, right? Or if you look at obviously ten billion dollars is ex aggressive, but if we look at from the semiconductor point of view, these are something we are looking forward two decades ahead, right? So uh, we need to expand this number to um, more uh, even aggressive number uh, to a certain extent. And the other thing, what we are really lacking is a hiring of a talent, technology transfer. We need to build policy that actually uh, helps us to bridge that gap. If you look at right now, we have 600,000 of uh, like uh, engineering students that are enrolled in electronics in India per year. The kind of PhD students here are just less than 1% in that uh, particular segment. So we need to build policies around that where we can actually impart a particular skill set in this particular field of electronics and make sure we are creating a talent pool. And while we are, uh, we are away from that, we need to define a policy that helps to bridge that gap through a certain technology transfer with different companies. So I think that that can be really, really helpful. And the other thing is, in terms of infrastructure, I think infrastructure is the uh, key to success here in the semiconductor space. Now, we need to make sure that our fundamental po policies and regulatory aspects on the infrastructure industry is really, really robust so that the companies that are starting right. here, they, they get the things rolling right from the day one. All right, Stephen, then let me ask you this, that, you know, India has a federal structure. A lot of the heavy lifting may be done by the center, but the state governments, the provincial governments, as you would call them, also need to now pitch in. What would be your expectations from uh, the state governments to ensure that uh, these commitments, these intent follow through uh, by all these uh, state governments? Well, certainly, you know, the, the infrastructure environment, uh, manufacturing semiconductors requires a 100% uh, secure and unrecorded supply of electricity, uh, significant water requirements. Uh, many states will have responsibilities to ensure that the physical infrastructure can support semiconductor manufacturing operations. You know, another challenge for India has been that while you do have wonderful technical, technical schools, wonderful IITs, actually you have few programs in chip manufacturing. Most programs like IIT Chennai, which I visited back in May, uh, are focused on, on chip design. So another thing that states need to right. do is to help build out the, uh, the curriculum around chip manufacturing. Now, some states have started this. Uh, there was a recent announcement with Purdue University um, that a program would be created on chip engineering uh, chip manufacturing uh, that would be recognized by the India Semiconductor Commission. But certainly uh, for states, uh, infrastructure uh, skills and kind of that, you know, land, labor, you know, taxation, you know, policy that are pertinent to the state environment yes. are critical. You know, it's important for your viewers to note that when semiconductor companies consider where to locate a new facility somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. they consider over 500 discrete factors. So India and every Indian state is competing with every other state in the world right. to get the best check mark they possibly can on these 500 factors to ensure that semiconductor manufacturing happens in your locality. Absolutely. And uh, with that, I'm completely out of time. Thanks so much, gentlemen, for uh, taking out the time and joining me in this edition of India Global.